Hello everybody and welcome back. Welcome to the start of season four. In the previous seasons we've covered everything from getting Android Studio downloaded and set up on your computer to uh, a simple explanation of core Android components such as activities and fragments um, and the application itself. Uh, went over a different uh, UI elements and such and actually went ahead and created a sample um, application to kind of showcase these different UI elements. Um, in this season we're actually going to go ahead and dive a bit further into fragments and a bit further into what uh, Google refers to as the single activity architecture. So I'm going to proceed forward with the knowledge of you know what we've covered in the previous season so if you haven't seen that and have no idea what I'm talking about um, definitely go ahead and you know get caught up to speed before proceeding here but um, definitely welcome and uh, thank you for everyone who's been watching the previous seasons and just kind of continuing the series um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just Google uh, navigation components here for Android specifically uh, I'll link when I get to this page, no, not this one, when I get to the right page, I'll end up linking it in the description so you can go ahead and see it. Um, and yeah, this is actually it. Uh, so they have um, some core topics here in the Android Jetpack, um, I guess, documentation and, and library that, that Google has put out and pushed for. And um, this season, you know, we're going to cover the, the navigation side of things. So you can read through all this kind of stuff here um, if you want to get a little bit greater detail and whatnot. But if we were to just take a look at maybe um, either that chart or I think it's actually here. Yeah, this chart here. Um, there's something similar on iOS. I think it's called like a storyboard or something like that. But if you can imagine these different uh, screens in the app, uh, or, or these different views right here being different screens in the app, you can see how they're connected to one another, meaning that you know this is the home or the main fragment that gets loaded in, and based upon you know one action in this fragment, you'll either navigate this way, you'll navigate this way, or this way. And then some of these paths will have deeper, um, you know, I guess routes, if you will. Uh, along them. So you can kind of think of this as like a, a tree um, or some kind of a graph that uh, you know exists as a, as a data structure and oddly enough it's actually called um, a, a nav graph that you end up building so it's it makes a tremendous amount of sense but essentially you're able to outline specific navigational patterns through this graph structure and then reference basically these edges of the graph. If you could imagine each one of these points here being a node on the graph and then um, the, the, the action to move from one destination to the next being the edges that connect the graph, you can actually reference these in code and a lot of the fragment transaction stuff that we covered in the previous season is actually taken care of for you under the hood makes life a lot easier to just navigate around and you know remove some of that boilerplate code that you would require um, and all of that is kind of bundled up in this idea of the nav host fragment um, which or sorry this fragment container view which they always give the ID nav host fragment uh, but it's you know a special component that exists um, in the library when you import it and it plays extremely nicely with these nav graphs that you define um, and then here is uh, showcasing the fact that you can actually have one nav graph point to another nav graph and then that graph will have its own um, you know navigational pattern that looks like this so there's a whole lot of um, uh, I guess flexibility in this system and it's kind of uh, definitely something that Google has been pushing for and, and what they recommend so I wanted to surface that and bring that up early and moving forward through this season and any of the future seasons we're going to keep this uh, navigational architecture in mind and we're going to implement this navigational architecture um, all the time because that's just the way we should go so 
you know, the previous seasons was kind of giving you the bare bones and understanding doing things, you know, the old school way or, or when I first started Android, how things were done. Um, but, you know, in some recent iterations uh, over the years, they've come up, you know, Google's come up with some more elegant ways to actually manage navigation um, for you. And, uh, you know, simple things like deep linking into a certain location, uh, providing type safe arguments from one screen to the next, uh, and then obviously managing the back stack for you is all built in, very easy, very straightforward, and very well documented on the web. Um, so it's definitely the way, um, the way to go. And then as we progress through another season, we'll get into the architecture components and Google's pushing for the uh, MVVM, the model view view model uh, pattern, which is quite similar to like a standard practice uh, of like some kind of observer based model, um, but it plays very nicely with these particular um, or, or, or this navigation architecture as well. So when you kind of use the different things that they push for in, in different aspects of the app, it kind of all comes together cohesively. And so this is our first step in that direction. Um, and again, just you know, providing that, that professional feel to all of the applications that we end up building um, on this channel here. So uh, just wanted this video to really be an overview of the different, um, or an overview of what I wanted to cover here uh, in this season. So in the next episode, we'll go ahead and start fresh with uh, you know, a brand new project um, and then we will, you know, connect to Git and, and do everything from the start. So uh, I will catch you in the next one.